Another dimension of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, of the future. The kingdom of God is also presented even in Jewish tradition beyond the Bible. Martha and I have been part of a Messianic Jewish community for some time. We're not worshiping with them at the moment because we feel God has called us to work with the prisoners at San Quentin and we joined the, the uh, chapel out there so we're members of a, a very unusual congregation. I'll have a little more to say about that a few minutes later. But in the, the Messianic Jewish tradition they always uh, include the Kaddish as part of the worship experience every, every Shabbat, every Sabbath when they, when they come together for worship. And one line in that has an interesting comment. It says, magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world that he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and in your days and in, in, in your lifetime of all the house of Israel, even speedily and at a near time. This is very much like what we hear in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In the, in the New Testament, the kingdom of God is perhaps the subject of almost all of parables, where Jesus is trying to tell you what the kingdom is or what it is like, what it is worth, what its value is, by telling stories in the form of parables. Often the kingdom of God is presented also as something coming in the future along the lines of what Daniel has said in the passages we have read. The kingdom of God then becomes a part of what some call biblical prophecy. I want to be careful here in what I say because, at least for these two, two or three minutes, because I do not know where all of you are on the subject of biblical prophecy. I am a professor of Old Testament and have spent most of my life studying the Old Testament and teaching courses on prophecy and trying to understand what the Bible teaches. And on this particular subject, I think there is more misunderstanding. There is more evil, in fact, done in the church by well-meaning people who do not understand what they are doing. That is, I know that Daniel meant what he said. And we find that page after page as you move through the New Testament, there is a dimension of the kingdom of God that is yet to come. Thy, we pray thy kingdom come. And there is a future dimension to the kingdom of God. But it is not what is taught by John Hagee and by others who somehow look out and just see only one message that somehow we are moving toward Armageddon. And somehow we must simply glorify and accept what is happening in Israel day after day. It took many weeks, really months. We were only there four months, and I think it was almost into the fourth month in Jerusalem before I really began to see what was happening right before my own eyes. My own, my own understanding had been so changed. We had the privilege of going out to Bethlehem. I had been there many times in years past, but this time it was altogether different. My heart broke as I entered the prison called Bethlehem, and that's what it is. It's a prison. Israel is an apartheid state. Don't let anyone kid you. What is going on in the lives of Palestinians day after day, year after year, is not God's will, and it is not the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. I know that God has a future for Israel and the people of God, the Jewish people, but it is not what is being taught by John Hagee and by others who are proclaiming a particular understanding of what they believe the Bible teaches about the kingdom of God. So, the, the kingdom of God, what is it that we are to seek? Are we to seek somehow just the 
political advancement of a particular ideology of people in a particular land as being part of God's purpose, or is it much more than that? <coughs> Many of us have read the books in the, the Tim LaHaye series of Left Behind. Is this part of what the Kingdom of God is all about? Yes, to some degree it is. Because as we look forward, we know that our future is not completely caught up in this world. That what God has called us to be is transcends this world. And God has called us to be a part of something eternal. Something that never will be destroyed. And that the kingdom of God is in fact a future experience and vision for all of us. And that there is much to be lost by those who are left behind. But the kingdom of God is also something that is very present. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus said it is in your midst, it is in you. The kingdom of God is here, it is now. It is to be experienced even in this present life. So then, how do we seek the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the way of justice itself. The kingdom of God is doing the will of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's a Jewish way, a Hebrew way of speaking poetically. You say something and then you explain what it means. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. They are one and the same. Now, as we think of the text that we read, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these things, these important things, these things that might make life enjoyable, will be added unto you. Sometimes the kingdom of God is found where you least expect it to be found. In our work at San Quentin, we were told about a movie, I, 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 get, I don't know how we missed it, but we uh, actually saw it uh, this Friday night, uh, the, the, Green, the Green Mile. We were asked by a couple of the inmates to, to watch the movie, perhaps some of you have seen it. And I was reminded there as you see that story of John Coffey, this huge giant of a, of a man who is on death row for the killing of two little girls, which he did not do. And yet he does, he is executed and killed in, in the electric chair there in the movie. But yet this gentle person is also an agent through which the kingdom of God is expressed in its own way. In the lives of the guards, in the lives of other prisoners, somehow as a person who may be very simple and doesn't know all that is going on, but he is a channel through which God does his own thing. And God does miracles of healing and of reaching out in surprising ways on that movie. And I saw in that a reflection in part of one dimension of the kingdom of God. It's often found where you least expected. Last Sunday we had what I'm still reflecting on. I think it was one of the most meaningful worship experiences I have ever had. We attended the service as we usually do there at the chapel and the speaker this time was a woman, Melissa Scott. And the message itself was very simple. She talked about the Valley of Achor and Joshua, where the Valley of Achor is the Valley of Trouble. That's where Achan and his family are stoned. And, and the whole event there as the children of Israel are entering the Promised Land. I think you've all read the story. But she started with a, a citation in the prophet Hosea that talked about the Valley of Achor being a door to hope itself. Now, God did something by way of preparation because she did not know as she prepared that message what also was taking place 
in the lives of others there in the prison. And just a day or two before the service, two class members, two of the people we have been working with, were released from what they call the hole. Now the hole is, it's not exactly solitary confinement in the way you might think of it, but it's being set apart totally from the rest of the life of the prison and what uh, is truly an ordeal, to say the least. What happened was very simple. Someone in the prison there had found a way to smuggle in a copy of uh, Clint Eastwood's movie, The Grand 